Hey guys, this is Alex Greenland with uh, Dark Rider Productions. Uh, today I thought we would do a, um, a few little minor tutorials. Um, I thought we would cover a basis of rotoscoping uh, using Video Copilot's Action Essentials 2. Um, and with an upcoming project of mine that will be featuring on Dark Rider, a web series, one of the clips from that. Um, so, shall we get started today? We're going to be using the software After Effects CS 5.5. Uh, to mask or composite these um, effects in. So um, let's go ahead and open After Effects up. Okay, here we go. Um, Alright, so first of all, you're going to look at your basic tabs. Um, over here in your project, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to import our clip. Um, it's located on, our de on my desktop. Uh, there it was, After Effects test clip. Okay, so now that we have our clip here, we're going to want to bring it down to the composition. Um, drags it best uh, down here into the composition. Um, otherwise, it might distort the quality um, a tad. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and run through our clip frame by frame. As we can see, um, the footage is very shaky. Uh, so we're going to have to do tracking. And right about there is where we're going to do the blood hit. Um, we, we, now, what I find is visual effects are extremely interesting because you can combine live action with digital, and that's what we're doing here. As you can see, we have some live action blood coming out of our actor's mouth, um, and a combination of the CGI digital blood will add uh, extremely realistic feel. So I think we'll start right about there is where we're going to need to start um, tracking our footage. So I'm going to go ahead and dry, uh, drag this over here so we can... Um, limit where our workspace will be right about there ish okay yeah that'll that'll be good to the end of the project okay so we're gonna want to um, go ahead and track the footage uh, let's go ahead and go up to layer new and null object um, if you can see what I did so um, if we go up here to layer new and null object all right and what you're going to see then is we have a null object now a null object is pretty much um you may see this in cgi software such as blender or maya um, basically it's a place for storing stuff so it doesn't really show up but now you can see we have this box here and that's our null object on the screen um, that'll come in use later right now we're going to want to focus on tracking this clip so um, we're going to want to go over here to track motion. So down here, in this panel down here, we have a few different options. We're going to want to track motion. And this will allow us to um, enable us to have the effect placed in a certain way and not be shaking around with the uh, handheld camera system that we were filming with. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and check rotation and scale. These two allow us to have a 3D environment, um, and then we're going to position our trackers on places of high contrast that will enable us to um, track. So I'm going to go ahead and extend the boundaries of our trackers, uh, and I'll go ahead and see that looks promising. We're going to do this frame by frame as well because um, fields aren't the greatest <laughs> place for tracking. So maybe here is a good place for Contrasting, I'm going to go ahead and lower where the boxes are or else it'll take forever as we uh, assume frame by frame um, to track our motion. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe fix a few minor scratches there. But um, okay, I'm going to start contracting um, down here. If you don't already know how to track, is uh, you have your timeline buttons. Um, so we're going to want to analyze one frame forward at a time. So we will be able to track precisely, not have the effect move all around the camera um, screen. So I'm going ahead and I checked that. It may take a while. Um, 
<clears throat> depending on you know how big the boxes are and how much space it has to um, find in order to find that track motion. As we see, um, we got a little mess up over here, um, but we can fix that frame by frame, and I can track that. Uh, probably wasn't the best place to track, but it is okay for now. There we go. Okay, and let's analyze one frame forward again. Okay, um, so over here didn't work as well, but we can fix that as it finds the new kind of area where it would be. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, so now that we've tracked our footage um, to the believable point, um, we're going to hit over here in the panel, same panel we've been working at, apply. And that's going to bring up here an X and Y, and we're going to say OK. So now, as you see, all the track points over here and the null object is actually parented to those track points. So if we play through our track clip, you could say that the null object actually follows the track points and that our effect will stay on there. So right about there is where I'm going to want the effect for uh, his head to be blown off. Um, so I'm going to go, now we get into the effect part of um, the tutorial. So I'm going to take the layer that we have selected now and we're going to want to duplicate it. Now this is where getting in the rotoscoping comes in handy. Um, so du by duplicating this layer, we're creating a layer, to the two layers that we can fit the effect in between. So it'll look, uh, give the appearance that the blood is coming up from behind his head. So um, I'm going to go up to edit and duplicate layer. Um, so we have now After Effects test and our uh, tested layer right uh, there. So that is there and this is here. Hold on one second. And we're going to go up to here and actually duplicate the layer. So then we have the two layers uh, that we can uh, work off of. So um, right here um, is where I'm going to want the effect. So we go up to File, Import, Files. And go to my desktop and hit Action Essentials uh, 2. Now we're going to be dealing with a blood effect so I'm going to bring in a few different blood files and see which one is uh, the best. Um, hit, bursts are different than hits. Splatter, splat, and maybe a squirt. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, a few more bursts. Uh, okay. As right, so you can see, it brings it over here um, in the left side and let's go ahead and look through the effects. I'm going to hit a burst and see kind of what that looks like in timeline. Okay, this is more of the effect <clears throat> that we're going to want. Um, something that is more kind of a gory looking, uh, what is that, <laughs> effect. So now that I have that in mind, we're going to want to start rotoscoping the layer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this uh, layer right here, the After Effects um, test, right? And now I'm going to go over here by double clicking the layer and it will allow us to rotoscope. Now up here in the top left corner is the rotoscope brush. So we're going to go ahead and click that and you can see it gives a green kind of uh, illuminate um, to where we're going to start rotoscoping. So I'm going to run a rotoscope around his head. Um, so, right here, maybe down by his arm, let's see where that gives us, okay, so it picked up some of her jacket, and now this is just, um, comes in, in, in handy a lot, uh, there we go, and we don't want her skirt or her leg in the shot, okay, so this looks actually really good, um, it's picking up a little bit, and so we just fixed the little minor details around here. 
but um, we're going to actually want to rotoscope like this for all of the uh, frames <laughs> that we'll have the effect in. So that looks that looks pretty good um, for that. So progress one frame. And we can see that it actually picks it up pretty good. Now we have a little bit of space in here. Um, there we go. Next frame. And it's doing an exceptional job at picking up um, our, our work frame by frame. Uh, there we go. Perfect, 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 perfect. All right. And basically, you're going to want to do this for all of the frames uh, that you feel are necessary to have the hit uh, come from. Um, I'm going to roto around this blood actually right there. Actually, no, not. Uh, there we go. Okay. And it's doing yet a, a another uh, good job at roto scoping that out. And that's pretty much because the blood will be flying out from there. So that um, is good enough because it will be right there. All right. So now that we have that roto scoped, we can now go in and import our file. So we wanted the blood burst. Um, we drag it on to our composition. Um, once we get out of the blood burst, so we're going to go up here to composition. And we're going to take the blood burst and drag it onto, and it's right here. Now we don't want it there. We want it in between the two layers. So if I progress to frame right about there. I can take the layer right there, and I can position it wherever I want, of course. Uh, okay. And put it behind his head, like that. So we can kind of get that effect out of there, like that. Um, and of course we'll do some feathering and stuff to the hit, because that is a little much. Um, but what will keep this effect, the blood, um, intact is we're going to want to parent it to null 1. So now that it's tracked, we can see that it follows our null 1, and it looks fairly, it, it's tracked, it doesn't move with the camera. So that's realistic right there. Um, and all that will be blurred and it will look really nice. So we're going to want to feather uh, this layer and come down here and, and, and do all that. Um, so now that you have that um, accomplished, we're going to want to add another hit. And now this would be in front um, of the head. <clears throat> so um, file and you can keep going on and on and make it as realistic as you want. For the basis of the tutorial we're not going to get in too much depth. Okay so after you're done you're going to go up to file um, and comp you're going to want to go up to composition and add to render queue and then w you will do your basics in f exporting out of there into your desktop. Alright guys uh, and I'll show you what this should finally look like when you're done. Okay guys, that wraps up this tutorial. Make sure to turn, uh, tune in to my main channel, Dark Rider Studios, for the upcoming web series, Project X.